golfer Jason Day overcame poverty and the childhood loss of his father to reach the pinnacle of his sport. But in 2017, just when his life and career seemed to be on par to reach his wildest dreams, everything changed. I get a phone call from, uh, from my sister. She's crying. She goes, Mom has lung cancer. I'm like, what is going on? And I get off the phone, I start boiling my eyes out. It seems like cancer really doesn't care whether you're an athlete, yeah. whether you're wealthy, whether you're poor, yes. where you live. It yes. just kind of hits you and yep. it just, just destroys you. Yes. Day brought his mother, Denning Day, to the States from Australia so he could care for her. But the news was devastating for Day and forced him to step away from golf in the middle of a tournament. You know, I walked over to the media center and then kind of got into my mom has lung cancer and I don't know what to, I don't know what to do. My mom's been here for a while. And uh, she has lung cancer. At the start of the year, um, she was diagnosed with uh, 12 months to live. I'm like, why? Why does it have to happen in general? But why does it have to happen to my mum? You know what I mean? Who's never had a drink in her life, never smoked in her life, been pretty healthy the majority of her life. Day, who lost his father to stomach cancer when he was just 11, says his mother worked and sacrificed so he could chase his dreams. And I'm sitting there going, oh, I, haven't had, I haven't had enough time to, to sit down and spend time with you. Like, I, I, want, I wish I could take it back. Fortunately for the days, her prognosis was wrong and her condition was upgraded. Is there a sense of feeling incredibly unlucky and also lucky? I mean, yes. unlucky that it hit you. Yes, but it's brought everyone closer together. It's been a, kind of a blessing uh, in regards to that. I know that your mother had, had lung cancer as well. I mean, what were you feeling? It just hits you, right? Like you, yep. you, you're at home or doing whatever you're doing. Yes. And you find out it's, it's your go from like living this normal life, life. to yep. like upside down. Like Jason, my mom, Clementina, was always healthy and fit. Our family had no idea anything was wrong until in 2013, she picked up a cough that wouldn't go away. Stage three non-small cell lung cancer is often fatal. By the time it was detected, the disease spread to her lymph nodes. Through surgery, radiation, and six rounds of chemo, my mom never lost hope and never complained. She's been cancer-free for six years, but many aren't so lucky. Lung cancer claimed more than 142,000 lives last year, but luck also found Day's mother. Through aggressive treatment, she beat the odds. For both of us, the memories are still vivid. I remember my mom like literally holding her up as yes. we walked. Yeah, same yeah, no, she, she literally, I, she, I, she yes. hold like that, so I'm like yes. holding her like this yeah. to try and walk her because they're so like, weak. They're so weak. Day is now working with drug manufacturer AstraZeneca on a campaign to increase awareness about lung cancer and the potential of biomarker testing to help treat the disease early. Today, his mother is healthy. She's loving life and she's back working and my sister just had a had her fourth child, so she's busy with looking after the grandkids as well. So. Things are, things are looking up. But like my mom and me, and millions of others who've seen loved ones go through a fight with cancer, Day says his mother's experience changed him. I remember having a phone call with her and I'm like sobbing on the, on the call. And I'm like, I want you to see my kids grow up. I want you to see them get married. That was a, a difficult conversation to have with her um, in regards to that because you just never know how, how long they truly have and how precious life is. Wow, he, mm. he talked about how his, that, that diagnosis changed his life. How did your mom's diagnosis change yours? You know, I remember I was in the field on a story uh, covering a, a flood and it just hit me like a flood, all these emotions and you can't concentrate on what you're doing and what direction your life is going. Everything changes and you're flipped upside down and you're living a life where you're happy and you're working yeah. and then everything changes immediately. Yeah. Oh and she's doing really well You now. work so yeah. hard for us. You went up every weekend yeah. to care for your mom and to yeah. be with her and yep. I totally was just saying she's got a good <laughs> prognosis yes. now, doesn't she? Yeah, she's cancer free now. She's made it past five years, which is the real benchmark. Jason is still kind of in that zone where he's waiting for a few more scans and more tests to come back. But I also remember doing that. It's terrifying. You wait for this phone call to say the scan is good. The next one's in six months, and you got to keep going through them for a few years. Dr. John Torres joins the table, and I think the thing that struck a lot of us was, and we hear this a lot, 
they weren't smokers. Yeah. How does someone who's never picked up a cigarette or in some cases had a drink get lung cancer? And that's probably the biggest misconception with lung cancer is that people say, you know, I never smoked. How did I get it? 15 percent of lung cancer cases are in non-smokers. It happens more in women than in men. And so uh, you know, this is something that happened with Miguel's mom here. It happens for a variety of reasons. If you live with a secondhand smoker or around secondhand smoke a lot, that can happen. Environmental factors and the biggest one probably being radon in some houses across the country can mm. cause it. And then there's the genetic factors especially if you have a family history of this. Uh, but a person's own genes can actually make them more likely to have lung cancer as well. What are the symptoms, Dr. Torres? I mean, I know you said your mom developed this cough. Is that the most common symptom? That's the biggest symptom, a cough. And people will say it's just a persistent nagging cough. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Sometimes when it gets advanced, they start coughing up some blood, but they can get shortness of breath, chest pain. And if they get frequent lung infections, they get a lot of bronchitis or pneumonias, and they can't figure out why they're getting them so, so often. That could be a sign. There's not a screening test the way there are for other conditions, right? They're screening tests, but they only recommend it for people that are heavy smokers. And it's a CAT scan because you get radiation. You don't go as a matter of course. Exactly. So. Mm -hmm. How can we keep our lungs healthy? I mean, obviously not smoking. Are there other things that we can do? Or? Yeah, I talked with experts yesterday, and that's the first thing you said. If you smoke, stop. If you don't smoke, don't start vaping. You know, make sure you certainly don't vape. Don't be around secondhand smoke. You, you obviously do the things that, that we know you need to do, you know, exercise right, eat right. But screening is important. Just real quick, um, you said that the prognosis changed like they thought it was stage one and that it was up to stage three. And sta like, do you have to, like, go in for surgery to figure out how bad the cancer is? And that's exactly what happens. It's not uncommon. So they'll stage it based on MRIs and CAT scans. And they can only do so much. But when they go in for surgery, they can do microscopic staging. Oh. And that microscopic staging often changes it. And sometimes it's worse, sometimes it's better. But that gives them a definitive diagnosis. Of Dr. John, thank you. Miguel, thank you. Thanks, I, I didn't even know that story until this moment. But by the way, you've written more about this, a beautiful essay about your mom and coping with her health battle. You can read it at today.com. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Definitely. Guys.